Welcome to the Property Proficiency Workshop. Whether you're just getting started in property or you've been established for many years with a large portfolio, this is the place to be. The place to turn your assets into financial freedom, accomplish your goals, live a better life and leave a lasting legacy. I'm Shaz Nawaz, I'm a property investor just like you and I've been teaching my strategies for over 18 years. This is the second in a series of three training videos in this workshop where I'll be teaching you how you can achieve financial freedom through property investing. Thanks to everyone who posted comments in the first video and to all those who subscribed. Now if you missed the first video, in that I went into detail into how you can set up your business structure. So if you want to watch that video now, click this link and it'll take you straight to the first video. Now in this video, I want to go deeper into property and show you how you can create true financial freedom. And we're going to do that partly by digging deeper into tax saving strategies because I can assure you, saving money is going to ensure you have more to invest which means you can grow your property and your portfolio a lot quicker. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this particular video so make sure you click the link below so you can take the download for the guide and make sure you've got plenty of pen and paper. Now there's a reason why you're watching this video. Either you're starting off and looking for the first deal or some capital or you're an experienced investor just like me and you're looking to leverage and scale up and grow your property business. Either way, I'm going to help you become as tax efficient as possible. And in my opinion, there's never been a better time to invest in property. And I say that because right now the market's hot, there's lots of deals out there and lenders and in terms of financing, there's plenty of cash out there. So people are open to doing deals and it's your opportunity right now to do as many deals as you can. And in the last 12 months, I've done five investment deals and I've got three deals in the pipeline and I'll talk to you about all that at some point in the future. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my most favorite tax saving strategies. Welcome to the second workshop. I hope you've downloaded the guide and then you've got some pen and paper because I'm going to dig straight into tax saving strategies so you can get maximum value. So the first lesson I'm going to share with you is for every pound you save in terms of tax savings, it costs you nothing extra. Whereas in any other type of business scenario, you've got to make something, you've got to market it, you've got to sell it, you've then got your variable overheads, you've got your fixed overheads. So by the time you make a pound, it's probably cost you 10, 15, 20 pounds to make it because the margins 2%, 5%, 10%, Whereas with tax savings, for every pound you save, it's 100% of that pound in your pocket. And in order to make that 30 or 40 pounds, to make that one pound profit, you're going to have to do more work, incur more costs, spend more time, employ more people have more resources the list goes on and on and on so you're far better off trying to save that pound rather than trying to make it because all of this plus the effort means you're not going to be able to save that many pounds because if you think about it if you want to get to one pound saving and it costs you 30 pounds if you try and do a hundred pounds, it's a hundred times as much. If you do a thousand pounds, it's a thousand times as much. And there's only so much you can do. So you're always better off looking to save money where you can rather than trying to make money. But of course, the happy medium is do a bit of both. So before we get started, I need you to know that the UK tax system is one of the most complicated in the world. And as it stands, the tax code the tax bible if you may, is more than 20,000 pages long. That means it's long, complicated, convoluted, 
Most people don't understand it and there's good reason for that. But I'm here to give you good news and that good news is that there are hidden gems in the tax legislation which means that if you work with the right person you're going to be able to find tax breaks reliefs allowances and exemptions and all of these are different so if you work with somebody who can navigate you around the tax legislation the tax rules keep you legal make sure what you're doing is effective put more money in your bank account and make use of all of these different tax breaks based on your situation and your scenario and your circumstances well the good news is your quid's in but the really important thing is you're only ever going to make use of all of these and all the other advantages and benefits if you work with a tax specialist who knows what they're doing in essence i recommend that you have to and you must work with a specialist property tax accountant because they know about property they know about tax they know about investing they'll be working with other clients who they're going to be helping doing all of this stuff here and most importantly i think you've got to eat your own dog food which means they'll be doing all of this stuff for themselves so they're walking the talk now if you bought your first property or you're thinking of buying it one of the first taxes you're going to come across is stamp duty land tax and this is one of the most complicated taxes out there the one that's least understood in my experience but there's many many opportunities let me explain If you're buying two or more properties, you can use MDR, Multiple Dwellings Relief. What that basically means is, let's say you're buying one property for £100,000, another one for £500,000 from the same person. You can average out the cost of both of those properties. So in this example here, £100 plus £500 gives us £600,000. The average price is £300,000. Then you work out the SDLT on the average price, which to keep it really simple means you'll pay less stamp duty land tax overall. This is a fantastic, fantastic relief which many accountants sometimes don't know about and many buyers miss out on. The second one is the magic number six. So if you're buying six or more properties from the same seller, you can then opt to choose non-residential rates of SDLT. Sometimes people call them commercial rates of SDLT. They're not really commercial, but because you're buying six or more properties, you can opt for that. And to keep it really simple, the difference is the actual thresholds and the rates of SDLT that you pay are different. So let me give you a scenario. You're buying six properties. You've got three options. You pay SDLT on normal rates, on every single property or number two you use MDR work out the average price of the six properties in one go and work out what that equals and then thirdly you use non-residential rates on the six properties work out what that equals and then say does option one work best for me option two or option three and whichever one gives you the most favorable outcome you can use that one and HMRC are absolutely fine with that. So that's totally your choice. Something else which people miss out on a lot. And again, this is something which my firm do a lot of work on and it's called, I'm gonna spell this is a long word by the way, buying properties which are uninhabitable. So for mortgage purposes, if you buy a property, that doesn't have a kitchen you can't finance it therefore it's classed as uninhabitable for SDLT purposes slightly different the property should not be classed as a dwelling or a dwelling house let me give you two or three very quick examples if the roof is missing on a property it is uninhabitable 
If you go into a property and all the plumbing works don't work, all the electricals don't work, and the floorboards have all been lifted out, and that property is not classed as a dwelling, then you don't pay residential rates of SDLT, you pay non-residential rates of SDLT, and the likelihood is you are going to pay less SDLT in total. Now the really good news for you is this, if you bought a property in the last 12 months and you think the property was uninhabitable, as long as you've got the photos, you can share those with me, I'll take a look and we'll get you back some SDLT. Now on average, we do five to 10 claims every single month for clients and non-clients on uninhabitable properties. So this is a fantastic tax saving that you can make when you either buy your next property or if you bought one in the last 12 months, we can get some money back for you straight away. And there are plenty of other SDLT saving opportunities, but I'll list two or three for you very quickly to give you maximum value and make sure you write these down. If you're buying properties through probate, there's potential SDLT savings for you to have. If you're buying property through a developer and you're exchanging your own property, there's SDLT to be saved. And I put GA, GA stands for Granny Annex. So if you're buying a property which has a separate Granny Annex with its own entrance, its own kitchen, its own bathroom, its own bedroom, which most granny annexes do, then you can save quite a bit of SDLT because of the granny annex. And this is a fantastic saving, especially for people who are buying a bigger home for themselves, who end up having a granny annex, or the property tends to have a granny annex, who can save a huge amount of SDLT. So don't miss out on this one and make a note of it. So the major lesson is, before you actually buy the property, speak to an expert, explore the SDLT options and opportunities. And if you've missed out on those, by the way, and it's not been more than 12 months, then speak to that expert now, i.e. people like me, to see if you can get some SDLT back. So I hope by now, I've drummed the point home that SDLT can create massive tax savings for you. The biggest SDLT case that I helped somebody with was worth 600,000 pounds. Now, admittedly, the smallest one we've done was about 1,500 pounds, and most cases are anywhere in between. But at the end of the day, as I said at the start of the video, every pound saved goes 100% into your pocket, so what have you got to lose? Now, of course, there's many other tax saving strategies that I can share with you. I can't share them all, but I am gonna give you lots of hints and tips today, right now, to give you maximum benefit. So write all of these down, because when you write stuff down, your mind is more likely to remember it. Number one, review your profit before your year end, because then you can start planning towards it. Number two, look at your costs and think, are there any costs that I can incur now which I can accelerate and claim in my current year rather than after the year and thereby having to wait 12 months to actually claim that cost. Now both of these things here you're going to pick up by having a pre-year-end tax meeting with your accountant. Exceptionally important, don't miss out on it. I know it's going to cost you a couple of hundred extra quid to have that meeting but I assure you all of my clients who have a pre-year-end tax meeting get much more value than 200 pounds or 300 pounds per year and they make much more in tax savings. Above and beyond that, make sure you make use of your 20,000 pound ISA, tax-free income. Why wouldn't you? Look at the enterprise investment scheme and see if that works for you. Or VCTs, venture capital trusts, to see if you can make them work for you. More importantly, Pensions, you can contribute up to 40,000 pounds every single year. And if in the last three years, you were part of a pension arrangement and a pension scheme, and you didn't make the contributions, you can carry them forward too. So it could be 40 grand this year, plus the last three years carry forward. 
So an extra £120,000, £160,000 in any one given tax year. Total game changer with this, if you link SAS, a small self-administered scheme for pension purposes, speak to an IFA, not my area, I am not allowed to give you investment advice, if you speak to an IFA, a SAS is going to be a total game changer and inevitably it's going to get you to a place where you can be your own bank. So you'll have cash funding available there through safe investments you've made through pension contributions and you use those funds to give to your development companies or your property business and charge interest and guess what? Your money, your charging interest, your company, your paying interest, so you're charging yourself interest one side you get tax relief for paying the interest the other side interest goes into the bank and guess what you pay no tax on it so this is a double whammy in terms of a double benefit for you why wouldn't you do this so make sure you look into a SAS if you do nothing else the next one CGT capital gains tax every single year you have your annual exemption for capital gains tax purposes. This is above and beyond your personal allowance for income tax purposes. Explore how you can use this. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. And there are ways you can use this and earn extra money into your bank account every single year, tax free or legal, no risk whatsoever. So why wouldn't you do it? And the most important for property investors like you and me, inheritance tax now we want to create a legacy we want to leave a legacy for our family for our children or whoever is important to you it could be a charity a university wherever whenever however but once you've created that wealth you've got the legacy you want to leave it to somebody or something so why not focus on inheritance tax planning look at your exposure see how much you have to pay and then plan on reducing that tax every single year for a certain number of years so when you inevitably pass away because we will have to die one day i'm afraid so when you and i pass away at least we've reduced the IST liability so those funds go to the people or the places that we love and care about and they get maximum benefit that's what it's about isn't it so for IHT you've got to start early You've got to have the right business structure, you've got to do it properly and it's extremely important you reduce your IHT exposure by looking at estate planning on a regular basis. Now moving on from that, we've then got the world of income tax. Now I've got, I know I've gone through quite a bit today, so I don't want to bombard you with more and more and more stuff because remember, there's 20,000 pages in the legislation and there's no way I can cover that in a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minute, 2 hour video. It's taken me 21 years to learn this stuff. It's going to take me a bit of time, I hope you'd agree, to share that with you and I can't do it in a few minutes or hours or days. It takes a lot longer. But one thing for you on income tax is make sure every single year, if you have a company and you're a shareholder, Look at dividend tax planning, so you take out the right amount of money that you need for your personal circumstances by paying the right amount of tax which works for you. And remember, the first £2,000 is tax free every single year by way of dividend. So if you take nothing else out as a dividend, make sure you take out the two grand because it's not going to cost you a single penny extra in tax. Moving on from that, let's say you're an experienced property landlord you've got let's say 10 properties in your own name you've got section 24 which is going to affect you basically means you can't claim all your finance costs what do you do well one of the options is to explore whether you should incorporate your property portfolio i.e move the properties from your own name or names to so two or more people into a limited company and what you could do is claim section 162 incorporation relief move your properties from your name or names into a limited company and not have to pay any tax whatsoever because usually if you move property into a limited company 
or you sell it to somebody else, same type of transaction for capital gains tax purposes, you have to pay capital gains tax on the increase in value from the time you bought it to now, less any expenditure incurred over that period. But if you use section 162 incorporation relief, no capital gains tax to pay, properties move into a limited company and you can claim 100% of your finance costs in a limited company, which basically means you'll pay less tax, you'll have more cash in your bank account, you can take that cash out for personal purposes or leave the cash in there and do what we all do best, which is buy more property. Now, the favorite one for all property investors is how do I buy my next car? And if you haven't asked that question before, you better ask it now and I'll answer it for you. So the options are, number one, you have property in your own name and you buy a car in your own name and run it through uh, your sole trader business, in essence, and claim all of the costs. If there's any personal use, you restrict the personal use. Let me give you an example. In a year, it costs you £10,000 to run your car. In a year, you drive 10,000 miles. I like to keep the numbers really easy. I get confused very quickly. So it's very simply, 10,000 miles, 10,000 pounds is what it's cost you. You work out that you drive 25% of the car for personal purposes, 75% of the car for business purposes. So it's cost you 10,000 uh, pounds, 7,500 of those miles, of the 10,000 miles for business purposes. So you claim 75% of the 10,000 pounds, so seven and a half grand, you claim through your business, two and a half thousand pounds was personal, you can't claim those costs. That's your first option. Your second option is to claim mileage. For the first 10,000 miles, you charge 45 pence per mile, thereafter you charge 25 pence per mile. To keep it really simple for you, if you have an old car, it's probably better to claim mileage if you like new cars, but like me, then it's probably better to go down this type of arrangement because the car is going to cost you quite a bit of money in terms of leasing or buying plus uh, interest payments. So that might be a better route for you to go. Above and beyond that, you may have an LLP or a partnership. Again, this works for that arrangement too. I'll put LLP but that covers partnerships as well. However, you might be thinking, well, Shaz, I've got a limited company. No problem. You've got the clear option of claiming mileage or the company buys the car. But the bad news for you is if that happens, there's company car tax to pay. Again, to keep it simple, generally speaking, the tax rates on that are extortionate because the government and HMRC want to stop people running their own businesses with company cars. They don't have a problem with you running a business, they have a problem with you running your car through that because somebody who's an employee of a business can't claim their car expenses, so why should you and I be able to? That's the basic premise which makes sense, so therefore they charge you a lot of tax for running your car through your company. However, your option for that is right now is have an electric car. The tax rates on that are exceptionally generous. So for example, if you were to buy a new Tesla and run it through your company, you're going to pay 1% tax this year, 2% tax next year, and that's as cheap as it gets. Compare that to like a Range Rover or an SVR or an S-Class or a BMW 7 Series or whatever car you prefer. The tax rates are going to be a lot higher than that. So I would say look at an electric car through your limited company the company pays for the whole lot and you get to claim capital allowances on the car or what's not to like and if you're thinking about capital allowances i'm going to cover that for you in a few seconds so now let's say you've got some property and you want to buy commercial property well the beautiful thing about that is you what you ought to do is claim capital allowances so simply speaking, you buy a property, in that property you've got fixtures and fittings. So I'll use this room as an example. Suspended ceiling, smoke alarms, lighting system, aircon, central heating, other things in this uh, room, 
which qualify for capital allowances. When you buy a building, your solicitor needs to work out what the capital allowances avail are available are. They probably won't do that, but when they make their standard commercial inquiries, all they ought to know or find out is, is their availability to claim capital allowances? Then you come and speak to an expert like me who will do a survey for you through one of our surveyors, work out what's available and claim capital allowances. To keep it really simple, what that means is, when you claim that allowance, you can write that off every single year for tax purposes. To link that to the company cars, you buy a car, the car loses value every single year, it's called depreciation, you show that in your accounts, for tax purposes, without meaning to get too complicated, for tax purposes, you add that back, and then you claim capital allowances against your taxable profit. So basically you write off some of the taxable profit and pay the tax on the balance. So capital allowances are a total game changer. To continue that example, once you've bought the property, if there are some capital allowances to claim, you then move into a property, inevitably you're gonna refurbish the property. So you change some of the stuff, renew it, update it, modernize it. Any of that expenditure, which qualifies for capital allowances, gives you even more to claim. So on the new expenditure, what you can do is, use the annual investment allowance, which means you can accelerate your allowances, claim them quicker, and pay less tax in any one particular year. And this is going to reduce your tax significantly, and I mean significantly. Now the other benefit is if you're running service accommodation, commercial property, uh, using capital allowances, and investment allowance, a SAS, pension contributions, all of that makes service accommodation a very, very appealing business. And if you're not using that as a strategy, the least I would suggest is look at it. It's a very, very viable proposition. So if you use some of the examples I've shared with you in this video, you can make some significant, healthy and chunky tax savings. So let me now share with you one that I did recently in terms of a development and how much tax I saved. So let me now share with you a recent development that I've just finished off. And I'm going to share with you the tax savings I made. I'm going to just round up the numbers to make it nice and easy, but the numbers aren't that far out. So we bought a commercial property. The first problem, it had asbestos. So we want to clear out the asbestos. That cost us a lot of money, but we claimed land remediation relief for clearing out the, the contamination. And that saved me just over 14,000 pounds. Second thing, business rates. The property was empty, we were applying for planning, and as you know, or you may know, planning takes quite a while. So the property was empty, but we still had to pay business rates. So I was approached by a charity, which works with homeless people, and, home, and that kind of resonates with me and fits in with my values, because part of being in property is to help create more homes for people. So helping homeless people, it was a natural fit for me. And I gave them the property for a whole year rent free it was a gift here you go use the property as long as you're helping benefiting homeless people in the local community go for it so they had a, a commercial property rent free for a year but the only exchange was if you're responsible for the property you're responsible for the business rates now that saved me just under eleven thousand pounds and because they're a charity they didn't have to pay the business rates so they benefited, I benefited, but the reason for doing that wasn't for the business rates, by the way, it genuinely was to help homeless people in Peterborough. Then what we also did was, uh, along the way, we incorporated our property portfolio using Section 162 Incorporation Relief for this particular project, which I've already covered for you in this video here. And that gave us a huge tax saving of 28 and a half thousand pounds on the uplift of the value of the property which went into the limited company so when we sell we're going to make that saving which is humongous and ginormous now as i've said to you earlier i like sdlt and i've shared some examples with you for well, this particular transaction we were able to save 
seven and a half thousand pounds by structuring our business in a particular way above and beyond that because we were doing a conversion so commercial property into residential we were increasing the number of dwellings which meant we pay 5% VAT and not 20% VAT on the refurb and that saved us over 20,000 pounds in VAT alone that is huge and significant and made a massive difference to our cash flow and above and beyond all this the person we bought the property from used to run it as a social club so they had fruit machines table tennis uh, games there they had I think four 12 foot snooker tables there and they wanted some storage space and the rent on that place was about three and a half four thousand pounds per month and they said can we keep our stuff in your property for three months I said of course you can and said in return we'll pay you two and a half thousand pounds rent per month they offered that to me so they paid me seven and a half grand rent for three months for storing their stuff in there gave them something to do in terms of keeping their stuff there gave me a bit of extra cash flow so this was the entire extra cash flow that came into my business as a direct result of mainly tax savings mm -hmm. and then of course the Brucey bonus which I've been talking to you about for quite a while which is capital allowances and we saved just under by a couple hundred pounds just under 24,000 pounds in capital allowances actually physical savings the value of the capital allowances was a lot higher but the tax saving is just under 24,000 pounds so if you look at all of these most of them bar the rent is pure tax saving from looking at different areas and this adds up to well over a hundred thousand pounds now here's the big big uh, thing you should take away this added up to an additional 33 percent margin for us on this particular project so we made 33 percent extra on our margin simply because of smart sensible tax savings and a bit of rent by the way can't forget that uh, which made a humongous and a huge difference to this particular development so the question for you really is why can't you do this of course you can and the good news is you don't have to do it on your own you've got to find a property expert who knows about tax who can help you identify these opportunities to get more cash into your pocket to help you pay less tax to improve your margins and the really important crucial thing which I said at the start of the video is I've had to do no extra work for all of this this is all pure tax saving yes there was work involved in creating the tax savings there was work involved in filling out some of the forms and making this happen but you don't do that you go to the expert people like me will do that for you you won't have to do any extra work and your figure could be a hundred thousand might be fifty thousand might be a hundred fifty thousand or more but at the end of the day the key takeaway is it's more cash into your pocket and into your business so I hope this shows you a bit of insight into what's possible okay. uh, so having the right business structure being tax efficient are a good start but that alone isn't enough to help you gain financial freedom what most uh, investors need is help support they need the right structure in place for their business not just for the business but around them in terms of the power team they need to find the right deals they need to find the right people to collaborate with joint venture partners funders agents planning consultants architects contractors subcontractors it really is a minefield if you don't know what you're doing but the good news is if you work with people like me we're doing that on a regular basis for ourselves and our clients and I am more than happy to help you so the final lesson in this workshop which I'll cover for you on the third video is how to find deals and how to fund those deals through the investment funding or investors so you want to make sure you don't miss out on that one 
Okay, we've covered a huge amount of ground in this video. Now you can take a deep breath. You don't need to know how to do all of it. You don't even know how to do it. The purpose of this video was to show you what's possible through sensible, smart, strategic tax planning opportunities. But I hope you'll agree, having the right business structure, having the right tax efficient means isn't enough alone to help you gain financial freedom and there's a whole lot more to do to get you there. A lot of people have been asking me how to find deals, how to fund deals, how to find investment. Where do you start? Now I want to tell you about the next video. So I want to sit back, listen, because you're really going to love this one. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be your favorite in this particular series, because I'm going to show you how you can find great deals and then find investment partners or funders to help you make those deals happen so you can leverage i.e. take off your property business whether you're new have some experience or have a lot of experience but i can assure you your business will take off so look out for the next video on my channel in the next few days now i want to hear from you what action are you going to take as a next step let me know in the comments below now if you found this video useful which i'm sure you have I want you to do me a favor share this with your family friends and contacts because they might need some help and support and it's a lot easier when you've got other people surrounded by you and around you who need help and support but who can also help and support you and of course if you like this video which i hope you have it would be appreciated if you click the like button so i know you liked it click subscribe so you can get all of my future videos and of course click the notification bell so every time I upload a video it goes bing and you know Shaz has got some new content to help you find, fund, leverage, grow, pay less tax, improve and increase your property business. <music>